and happy 4th of July here from Texas with the Starch Lady. I brought that to your attention because in Texas there are two things that I had never eaten until I moved here 29 years ago and that was poblano peppers and cilantro and now I can't get enough of either one. I make cilantro salsa so full of cilantro that it is green as my son Riley can tell you. So we're going to do a stuffed chili riano today. It's the 4th of July. I want to do something a little bit extra and special and spicy. And poblanos is your perfect friend for that because it's not too spicy. It's not hot like a jalapeno at all. It's probably about 1,000 to 2,000 on the heat index where uh, jalapenos can go up to 10,000 and hover between 7 and 8 most consistently. So this is a very mild but just enough flavor to be just delightful. This one's firm. As you can see here, it's going to roast up nicely in the uh, oven when I put everything together. This one here is starting to get just a little bit soft here on the side. And so I've had these for about a week. I just rinsed them off. I've got some zucchini, organic of course, and you see here with the, the number, this is how you can tell if it's something's organic. Regular zucchinis would be sold at 4067, but with the nine in front of it, it means that it's organic. Anytime you can poke your finger through the skin like that, flesh like that, you need to buy it organic. If it's got a thick skin like watermelon or avocados, where you really can't do that too well, you don't have to worry about them being organic. But uh, for the soft flesh like this, you want to have them organic. So to make this ready to stuff it, we're going to do the stuffed poblanos. We're going to cut off the end and you're going to expose the seeds here in the middle. Just give it a good twist and pull that out and give that a good scoop. Get those seeds out of there. And it's going to be ready for you to stuff for your goodness. Okay, you want it to be no seeds on the inside. So we're going to make the insides now. We're going to set these over to the side here because we're going to stuff those in a minute. But we're going to take some uh, baby asparagus and dice that up. We're going to take the tops from the uh, poblano, dice that up. And uh, we're also going to dice up the zucchini and put that in here as well. Okay, we're gonna get that all put into a bowl so we can mix this up really good. We don't eat meat, and so we're not gonna be adding anything like that, any pork or anything like which is the traditional recipe. We're gonna be doing rice and vegetables, and it's gonna be wonderful. So I have here some leftover rice and vegetables and mushrooms from earlier this week, and our, I did like half of it with poured it back in here and the mushrooms and kale will add a good little kick here or flavor. I've got a little bit left that's just plain that I'll have probably for breakfast tomorrow with some cinnamon and rice milk or berries. Okay. I've got some cactus here, nopalitos. Uh, if you've been on any of my videos, you know that I'm obsessed with them. Now, I did try these before moving to Texas when I lived in Las Vegas, Nevada. I know. Go think about that for a second. Cactus. Sold in the grocery stores in Las Vegas, Nevada. Yes, sir. I was so curious by what they did with them. I asked the people that worked in the grocery store. They told me how to cook them. It tasted like a giant green bean. And uh, then the, you can buy them here, like I get the Goya brand, and uh, that's a Mexican brand that doesn't use any um, GMO type stuff like uh, Monsanto's isn't even allowed in the country. Good on you, Mexico. And it is a little bit pickled, so it's going to add even some more flavor dynamic to this dish that I'm creating here. Just cut that up nice and small, too. Adding the zucchini. Let's get that in there. And then we're going to cheat for this last part. 
if I was totally doing this properly, I'd cook up some tomatoes and um, onions and garlic and peppers and cilantro and stuff, but I'm going to cheat and I'm just going to use some chunky salsa. Get that all in there. Now we're going to mix it all up. Did I just say lip instead of up? <laughs> I think I did. Hey, it's a free video. What can I say? Get that all mixed up. Now obviously this is going to make way more than I need for these two little chilies here. It's just me eating today. But I am going to enjoy every bite of this as a leftover during the rest of the next couple of days. It'd go great inside of a corn tortilla or a lentil tortilla like I made earlier this week and so forth. Now to soften up some of these vegetables are a little bit more crunchy like the zucchini and the asparagus. We're going to go ahead and heat it up on the stove before we stuff it into the peppers. This is a non-stick scan pan. This is Dr. McDougall's wife Mary's favorite kind of pan, if you can see the scan pan marking on there. It uh, is an expensive little guy, but you can't ruin it. You can't scratch it, and so it makes a really good non-toxic non-stick pan. I didn't have to add anything to it. The steam from the vegetables and the salsa has been plenty enough to get it steaming. That's what I wanted to be able to just soften up those vegetables just a little bit. It's coming along nicely. I'm going to turn the oven up to 400, 400 degrees. So we're going to put that on a roast. We're going to go up to 400. Start. Yeah, that's much softer. I don't mind a little crunch, but I do want it to cook thoroughly, so I'm going to give it a little boost. In kind of a hurry because I'm hungry. <laughs> Isn't that how it always goes? I know this is not traditional Hispanic way of doing this, so this is actually some thyme from my garden that I just harvested and dried this week. I have a um, what do you call it? A green tunnel, greenhouse tunnel. And it's staying about 20 degrees hotter in there than it is out in the rest of the yard. And so I can put some of my herbs and stuff that I'm harvesting in on a mesh screen and dry it out and just pull the leaves off and voila, you got a bowl full of thyme. Okay, I'm gonna give it another good mix here in the bowl, make sure I got everything combined and then stuff it into the peppers. Trust me, there is so much flavor and goodness going to go on in here that even a trained meat eater would not notice that it was missing. Your body will thank you. Trust me, it's the flavor that we're wanting when we're re preparing a meal. It's kind of like um, I thought I was in love with hot dogs for a long, long time. Even after I became plant-based, that was a weakness for me from time to time especially when traveling and um, it's the flavor it's the sauerkraut it's the mustard that I want and I can be just as happy with a bowl full of mustard and sauerkraut like you saw me eating last week it's it's easy to just get the flavors that you love and make it last okay we're gonna top it with the last of the marinara sauce from the meal from last week get those leftovers used up Okay, we're going to pop it in the oven for about 20-30 minutes, and it's going to be nice and delicious. While I'm waiting, I've added a little alkaline water to my leftover salsa, and that's going to be my drink with my meal. Another tip while we wait is to make sure that your produce lasts longer, is to separate it with layers of paper towels, napkins, cotton hankies and it'll keep the moisture off of the produce and make it last a much longer time. 
So you can do this with lettuce, you name it. Any kind of produce you can do this with and it'll last way longer, weeks, not days. And there you have it. Is that gorgeous or what? Now I used, you know, the asparagus, kale, mushrooms, zucchini, broccoli, onions, rice, the salsa, the thyme from the garden. And you can literally use anything you want to mix with the rice and stuff it with the poblanos. Roasted about 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. And as you can see, it got nice and roasted and browned on the top as if I had put it on a flame. Enjoy. Bon appetit. Starchlady.com